Welcome back to Uncle Danny Cooks. Today we are going to make logman soup. It is a soup from the Uzbekistan area region. Uh, so it is uh, Asian in nature, um, more more Russian uh, side than the uh, than the Asian side, but still Asia. So uh, we're going to start off with cutting the vegetables, and then we're going to start after that uh, going through the first steps. This is a relatively simple soup. It is very flavorful and delicious and great for the winter months. Okay, so we're going to start with pepper. All right, green, red, yellow, doesn't matter. All right, I'm gonna go with red this time. And what I like to do is I like to slice what I call the wall method. So you take, you have, if you look at it, look at it as a square, okay? So you cut it one, one wall off, two walls, three walls, four walls, and floor. And what you end up with is a core that you can throw away okay now from here you can make strips cubes whatever you want um, uh, for the soup because we don't you know we want a nice uh, spoonful of vegetables and meat and broth we're gonna cut it not too too small because too small and it will disappear in the soup it'll get too soft and there won't be anything but you know smaller dice Okay, so now in the background there you should be able to see we're going to be using carrots, we're going to be using celery, we're going to be using potatoes, I got some onions and green onions, uh, parsley, this is going to all come in together to a nice uh, beautiful tasting broth, it doesn't take long to cook. It doesn't take a lot of effort, but it is uh, it is beautiful nonetheless. Now I'm going to get two bowls. All right, one bowl is going to be the bowl that we're going to saute with the ingredients we're going to saute the meats with, and the second bowl is going to be the vegetables that we're adding afterwards. Okay, so the peppers is going to go into the afterward bowl. All right, I got the mushrooms. We're going to do the mushrooms here. Mushrooms, I like to. I like to use the little canister that they give us, okay? Uh, for the for the mushrooms, I like, depending on the quality or, or uh, situation, like something like this, you know, we're just gonna de take out the stem, de stem it, okay? Nice, beautiful mushrooms. All right, mushrooms give a great earthiness into a soup. It's a, uh, it, it's just a like a like a umami type flavor on into the base of the soup uh it gives it a, a what would say a foundation it makes it a little bit more savory in my opinion so i use a whole package of mushroom of mushrooms i just do a slicing them mushrooms we get soft so we don't have to worry about that they'll get through that pretty quickly. All right. I'm going to put that back into the container. Now that's going to go in after every after the, the broth is in. After we start the broth, we're going to throw the mushrooms in. We don't need to saute the mushrooms. Okay. All right. Now, onion. We've done it in, in previous videos. I'm going to do it again. Okay. There's numerous ways to cut onions. I find this to be the easiest route. I look for the base and the top. I get as close to the top as I can, and I slice it off. I get to the bottom, slice it off. Now I got a little flat base. I cut it in half, take the outer layers, and peel. Okay? You just peel off the outer layers, and you got a wonderful easy onion that you can now slice up okay now if I were making a sauce I would try to get them sliced thinner or cut thinner or dice them for this 
I just need to slice them. The soup itself will, uh, they're going to pretty much, uh, not disintegrate, but they're going to be uh, easy to eat. And, and, you know, get a, get a little bit of onion in that spoon without having to cut it a lot. Okay, so that's my yellow onion. You can use red onion, you can use whatever onion you want. All right, now, since we're on the onions, we're going to go to scallions. Okay, I get a bunch of scallions green onions. I cut off the the ends. Okay. Now why are we using two different onions? I kind of like the green onion. Uh, it has a very nice gentle flavor. Different than the brethren of yellow and red and all that. It's more gentle. I do enjoy it. And green onions were very plentiful in Asia. So they are used in a lot of Asian cooking. Uh, but I like to just get them not I'm not trying to be uh, a small cut but I'm just trying to get a nice cut so we can get them into the broth all right these are not going to be sauteed so we're gonna put this in the non saute bowl okay the yellow onions we are sauteed the green onions we are not they're not of a saute variety celery For a soup like this, you can do two things. We can cut off the stalks and then chop it down, or we can just take the bunch and shave off the top of the bunch down, getting There we go. I like the celery leaves. I think they add flavor. I think it, it's just a, a wonderful thing to add into soups. So I keep that. This is also going into the non saute bowl. All right. Parsley. So you can get a bunch of parsley and you're just going to finely chop it. Okay. Fresh parsley has a wonderful smell to it, has a wonderful texture. We're going to put that with the mushrooms. All right. Carrots. Now, sometimes I'll use shredded carrots, sometimes I'll use the baby carrots. For a soup like this, again, where I'm going to be using everything, where everything has got to go on that spoon. I'm just not making a broth. I'm going to cut these down. You, I would use string carrots, but I think they're too small and they would uh, they would disappear. We do want to have a little bit of that. Uh, we do want to have a little bit of that uh, tender carrot in the in the in the spoon. All right. So we're going to get through the rest of this. And then we're going to get ready to cut the meat. Okay, so we have our non-stewed vegetables and mushrooms, non-sauté non bowl and area, and we have our sauté. Now you'll see that this is uh, garlic and onion. I did add a couple cloves of garlic, crushed and, uh, and chopped. Okay, so now we're going to go to the meat. All right, now, really, whatever you want to use on this, you want to use uh, sirloin, you want to use your cubed stew beef, which is, I'm using cubed stew beef. I'm also using a boneless short rib. You can also use meat on the bone. Bone will give it a little bit more depth as well. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I got the meat here. Now you're like, oh, this is already cut up, Uncle Danny. It is cut up, but you know, we're going to cut it just a little bit smaller. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure again that we have uh, a good, a good broth. More surface volume means more flavor more tender of the meat also this is uh, supposed to be a broth that you can put onto your spoon everything needs to be, be able to put on your spoon so it's got to be small enough to fit on your spoon with the broth with the vegetables so I'm, I'm gonna cut into nice little pieces not super small but nice little pieces uh, the meat okay 
and we're going to get that all all done here okay now if you were doing this with meat on the bone you will get as much meat off the bone into small pieces and then you're going to throw the bone into the pot as well and you're going to use that you'll you'll take the bone out obviously once you are finished with the soup uh you and you can give those to a dog or or throw them out whatever you want okay so i have you know, i'm going to get through this i'm going to get through the other package of meat and then we're going to go over to the next steps okay okay welcome back we are going to be working now on the uh and getting everything started here okay so i'm gonna put in uh some olive oil i like to use extra virgin olive oil into the pan as you can see i like to put in enough that it, once heated up it will coat the bottom of the pan okay we're gonna get to high heat on this all right the we are going to do the sauteed bowl the bowl of sauteed the onions and the garlic and the meat we're going to brown the meat saute the onion and garlic we're going to add a little bit of salt a little bit of ground pepper and some ground cumin okay and we're going to get a nice uh nice color on the meat a nice sear on the meat and then we're going to add in uh, a little bit of wine uh, and then we will from there uh, add in tomato paste okay and then we're gonna coat everything up make sure everything's got uh, a good aroma to it and then we're gonna add the non sauteed vegetables at that point and then we'll add water uh, and broth okay so we're gonna as soon as the oil is hot we're gonna get everything starting to cook here okay we got the oil nice and hot we're throwing in all the onion and garlic And we're throwing in all of the meat. A little pepper. And a good pinch or two of salt. everything up here okay now while that is going I'm going to get cumin I'm going to go with one tablespoon of ground cumin to start off I may need more. If I do need more, I will add more. It'll be, uh, it's it's going to be flavor based. So, this is more like when you have the broth going, if you need a little bit more depth or a little bit more flavor, you can add a little bit more cumin, you can add a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper. Now normally, I would do this in another in a in a frying pan, uh, sauté pan, and then I would transfer it to the pot. But what you would be missing if we were to do that is the flavor coming from the what is sticking to the bottom of the pan. You 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 miss that. That is an essential part of this broth. That flavor that you create, okay, with these uh, with some of this fat and uh, and juices and oils that would be left behind in the frying pan you want to keep it all in this pot you want to make sure you're getting that good flavor okay so I got the meat nice and brown okay I got everything cooking and what's going on right now is the meat is starting to release its fats and oils. 
the onion is starting to sweat out the garlic is sweating out and so we have this this uh this juice at the bottom now that's forming which is good that's what we want now we're going to take tomato paste all right you can do one teaspoon two teaspoons three teaspoons i think the tomato adds a nice enriching flavor so i i for the amount of soup i'm making i use approximately six ounces of uh tomato paste now uh when it comes to tomato paste i know that you know there is a slight difference you know if the brand is it, from branded to non-branded there is a slight difference i'm not gonna i'm not going to um to lie but does it make a difference in what we're doing right now no so if you want to get yourself some nice uh inexpensive tomato paste get yourself the inexpensive tomato paste that's fine now what i'm doing is i'm going to mix this all in together now okay getting that tomato paste and the onions and the garlic and the beef all mixed together and what i'm getting is this wonderful aroma right now right in my face here it is starting to smell delicious because you got the brown cumin in there with salt and the pepper really starting to get a nice flavor in there now all of those vegetables that we cut up the celery the carrots the the pepper the green onions all of that is going to go in now okay and we're going to get that all mixed in Point, we're gonna let it we haven't re reduced the heat yet okay I'm gonna add a little bit of red wine not a lot no more than a cup to just add another layer to the flavor it gives it a little bit of a, a little bit of the acidity to complement the tomato it also the red wine will help with the with the meat all right it also gives a lot of a lot of good flavor. I, I like adding a little wine. So you got everything coated in there. You know the rum I'm getting more right now is is the alcohol coming out. <laughs> With that is mixed the cumin and the and the, the brown meat and the onions and garlic. I'm starting to get some celery. Oh, just a hint of the red pepper coming through now. We're going to let it uh, continue to cook away here, okay? And then we're going to add some water. We're going to start adding some water for the broth. Now, if you want to add a box of broth, you can add a box of broth. It wouldn't matter what broth you get, chicken, uh, beef, or vegetarian. It doesn't really matter, uh, even bone broth I've seen. Um, you can do that as well. Uh, I'm going to be making, I'm going to be adding a little bit of bouillon or consomme uh, to, to this later on towards the finishing edge just to make sure I get a, uh, um, make sure I have the, the right uh, flavor to this, okay? And so I uh, started adding in water, as you can see. That's not all the broth we're going to have. We're going to add more to that, but I'm letting that start the process of, of mixing in. Okay, so I've added um, a little bit more water, as you can see. All right, it is it is uh, starting to thin out there. Okay, we're uh, we're getting that up to to a nice simmer. We haven't it hasn't started simmering yet, but it, it's getting there. I'm gonna add the parsley and mushroom now. Okay, mix that in.
I'm going to add just a little bit more water because I do like to have a lot of broth because uh, this soup does have noodles in it in the end so you want to have it you know a good amount of broth I'm going to just add a little bit more water because what we add is going to eventually it's going to simmer away so we're going to add just a little bit more to give us a little bit room up simmering So the soup is working now. We've got all the ingredients in there except for one. Okay, we're going to cut this potato, a couple potatoes, three to four, depending on how much you want, how much soup you're making. Sometimes it can be two, okay? Uh, it doesn't really matter what potato you want to use. Uh, I'm using golden potatoes right now. You can use russet potatoes, red potatoes. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever potatoes you want. Okay, now once you get it, once you get it uh, peeled, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into a, not a small, small dice, it's more like a medium, small dice. And so as you can see, I'm kind of cutting thick slices. All right, and then I'm going to cut that into strips. All right, so now you got french fries if you want, or you can then cut it into. Now, this is almost the last step. Why is this almost the last step? Well, once you put in the potatoes, there's a so, only so much uh, the potato can take, only so much cooking the potato can take before it, it literally will disintegrate. Uh, and then you don't have potatoes. You'll have a, a, a potato-y soup, but you won't have potatoes in the soup because it will have uh, turned into a, into mashed potatoes or mush and incorporated into the soup, thickening it, thickening it up, but not really giving you the satisfaction of a nice, soft, cooked bit of potato in your mouth from the spoon. Okay, so once you put in the potatoes, it is only going to be about 20 to 30 minutes. Just check the potato. Once the potatoes are done and soft, that's it. It's done. The soup is done. You take it off the heat. What you're going to end up doing is you're going to make up. Some, you're going to uh, make some thin noodles, like angel hair pasta, or if you have thin Asian noodles, that will do. And then I will show you how to plate this up uh, once I get my potatoes and soup fully cooked. All right. So the soup is done. The potatoes are nice and soft. The broth is rich and delicious. And you can eat it like this. It is a delicious soup. Or you can make yourself the thin noodles like I suggested. I got myself uh, uh, thigh nood uh, noodles from Thailand. Thin noodles, you just boil them a minute and a half. Boom, it's kind of like ramen noodles. Uh, and you just, you know, one of these per bowl. Boom. You ladle on the ladle the soup on and you have an amazing meal uh i hope you guys enjoy this i hope you give it a try this is by far one of the better soups that i have come across and i love making it